Good evening and welcome to this fantastic edition of Plus Sports on Plus TV Africa. It's a Monday evening uh, and of course it's the start of a new week. Um, it has been a lot of sports uh, across the weekend from Saturday to Sunday, uh, from tennis to football. Of course in football the transfer market is open meaning that um, there's a lot going on in the transfer room on mail. Stories about players who might be staying put, stories about players who might be leaving and of course the ones who definitely have changed clubs uh, like uh, the likes of Xavi Simons uh, from PSV Eindhoven to Paris Saint-Germain, that and many more uh, we'll be touching on uh, later on on the show but it promises to be a bumper edition of the show um, right here. We're airing live from our studios in Victoria Island uh, in Lagos. Welcome to Plus Sport. My name is Wale Agbede and I'm going to be your host uh, for the next 50 minutes or thereabout. Uh, usually we like to start from the home front uh, with regards to how we delve into all the nitty-gritty of what it is uh, that uh, we have on the menu to serve you guys today. Um, but we even have it bigger uh, this evening right here on Plus Sports. Um, uh, over the course of the last seven days or thereabout, um, uh, there's been a blockbuster interview uh, that did go down uh, on Sky. Uh, it was um, between Gary Neville and uh, England midfielder Dele Ali. Of course, we all know Dele Ali. Um, I used to be at Spurs, uh, played in Turkey uh, recently. Uh, and of course, I mean, recently the stories about his career have been uh, more about how Topsy Turvey it has been. You know, at 20, he was on top of the world. You know, the next Frank Lampard, um, he was starting for England week in, week out, was one of the mainstays in Mauricio Pochettino's side at White Hart Lane. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, after a, a, a drop in form, a couple of injuries, uh, it seems like uh, he has struggled to hit those heights uh, that he hits at the start of his career. Uh, and, uh, you know, some information have come, to, you know, they've come to light, you know, just from the interview uh, that he did with Gary Neville uh, just last week. Or, I mean, he did the interview earlier. It was released last week. Um, and, you know, the, the whole world has been, you know, shocked by some of the things that he's revealed, uh, you know, with regards to, you know, some, you know, trauma that he says he has, you know, suffered whilst being, you know, younger, uh, as a young boy, uh, the time that he spent in Nigeria, um, supposedly as a punishment uh, from his uh, father at the time, uh, whilst he was younger. Uh, for, for those who don't know, there was a time when, when he started his career, uh, he used to wear Ali at the back of his jersey, as most players do, uh, wearing their surnames. Um, and then, you know, all of a sudden, he changed to Dele. Uh, and the story at the time was that uh, he didn't feel enough connection with the Ali name and that he didn't think that uh, it was deserving uh, to be on his jersey, especially as he had become uh, a worldwide superstar. Uh, in reacting to that interview with Gary Neville, uh, there's been an exclusive story that was dropped by Ojora Babatunde, a journalist, a Nigerian journalist based in France uh, on uh, OJBSports.com, uh, that has been making the rounds over the last couple of days uh, and uh, joining us today to discuss all of the details and to react to that interview is uh, a spokesperson uh, for the Daily Ali family right here uh, in Nigeria. We have uh, Otumba. Johnson Olowu and his son Storm Olowu, who are relatives of the former Tottenham Hotspur midfielder, joining us live on the show today. Otumba, good evening. Thanks for joining us on the show. Uh, good evening. And I'm um, not in Nigeria at the moment. I'm somewhere in Europe. All right. Fun. All right. And fun. this is my son, Storm Olowu. And I speak to you. And I'm Otumba Pujore Olowu. All right, all right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for that uh, correction, Otumba Olu. Uh, and I'll start with you, Otumba, um, as we delve into all of this. Um, I know that you've seen the uh, the interview, or at the very least, you've you've read excerpts uh, from that conversation that uh, Daily Ali had with um, Gary Devil uh, last week. Um, what, what, were, what what was your first reaction when you came um, across that interview? I'll let my son respond first, then I can just come into it, because um, he is the one that broke the story on his Instagram page, and um, sent all these pictures to counter what Dele said on the Gary Neville show, and his page has been blocked for two days <laughs> by Instagram, so... So, yeah, um, when we first saw the interview, we sat here as a family, we watched it, and to be, to be frank, we were quite shocked, some of the claims and um, things that were said by Dele himself, 
uh, ranging from the um, punishment trip to Nigeria, he said, uh, selling drugs, um, his mom being an alcoholic, 80, 80 to 90% of that interview to me was pu purely false and misleading. But obviously, the majority of people don't know his family and they only know his acclaimed family, the Hickfords. So it's going to be very easy for people to believe what was said. So hence why we're here now countering that. All right, so let, let, let's start from the beginning, right? Um, like you said, uh, the whole family was shocked, uh, you know, having heard, you know, some of the things he said. Um, what, what actually happened? How, how was Dilly's childhood? I know that um, he, okay. he, he started growing up in the UK, then came to Nigeria. Yeah. What, what exactly happened uh, during that time? So, yeah, Dilly was born in the UK, in Milton Keynes, in the same town that I was born and raised in. And um, he was there for a few years before he decided, well, his dad, his dad decided to move him to Nigeria to stay with him, as that's where his dad was working at the time. Um, his dad thought that was the right decision because obviously any parent would want their son around them. And um, yeah, then he was there. He went to one of the best private schools in Nigeria. It was um, paid for. Uh, it cost $30,000. What's the name, sorry? Abisina. 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 By country club in Ikeja. In Ikeja. And the school cost, um, the fees are 30,000 pounds a year. I did the research myself. Um, the, and the photos are uploaded. You can see Delhi around a host of interracial and foreign classmates. So it seems to me like for him to say he got sent to Africa as a punishment is a bit absurd seeing as, you know, he was in a very good school. He would have had somebody take him to school. He would have had somebody make sure that his life around the time was very organized and very high class in Nigeria. You know? And, oh. um, okay, go on, sorry. All right, Storm. So, um, I, I've spoken to you know people who have opinions, different opinions, with regards to the initial claims and, of course, the reaction uh, from yourself and, of course, the family generally. And you know, we, we've heard a lot of stories, a lot of tales from people who have lived abroad, who were born abroad, where their African parents threaten them with, you know, when they misbehave or you know they have bad grades. And, and the parent says, oh, I'm going to send you back to Africa, um, you know, so you, so you could yeah. get some discipline. Mm -hmm. it, you know, so one of the feelings, one of the reactions I got was sending him back to Africa, regardless of how posh his life was here in Nigeria, just the, 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 the intent, right, to send him to Africa mm -hmm. could have still been a punishment. Because, okay. you know, you so, so how, how do you react to that? Well, you see, obviously, there's a stigma about uh, foreign kids, foreign African kids get sent back as a punishment. In, in this case, Delhi wasn't sent anywhere. He was taken with his dad to go and live with his dad, where it was convenient for his dad to keep an eye and raise him, you know? And this is before the ages of seven, before the ages of eight, where he's still a young kid. So what seven, six-year-old is, is getting punished by getting sent to Africa? It's quite evident that he was only there just to be supervised by his dad. So I don't see it as a punishment. I think that's very misleading for Delhi to say. And um, yeah. All right. So you, you said he, he was brought, you know, to, to be with his dad, where his dad can yeah. look over him. Mm -hmm. do, do you know why he was brought back to Nigeria if he wasn't yeah, for punishment? because his dad works in Nigeria, Texas and Canada and not the UK. And it was convenient for his dad to have his son where he's working and where he lives, you know. So that's why he brought Delhi back with him. So where, where, where was his mom at the time in all of this? The mom was the Milton Keynes. That's where she lives. That's where she, she's a white lady. She has two, Delhi has two older sisters and she's a white lady from Milton Keynes. That's her environment. That's where she works and that's where she knows. All right. So you're saying categorically that um, she wasn't an alcoholic and that was not why no, no. he was brought well, up to my question, my, my counter to the um, alcoholism claims is Delhi has two older siblings um, from um, two older siblings, two older sisters. They've never made, they've never been removed from their home by force by um, child protection services. There's nothing ever come out from that house about them being under an alcoholic parent mm -hmm. or abused. So my question is, to a household of three kids, but now more, why is Delhi the one that's noticed that she's an alcoholic? And why is no one else ever spoke about that? Why is the court, um, the court and the community not quite involved and, withdrawn them, and social services withdrawn them from the house? So There's no evidence of her being an alcoholic legally. So Stump, uh, before I go to Otumba briefly, um, from your perspective, why do you think Delhi would have you know, made these claims publicly, especially my, at the level of the kind of platform in which he's gone on to go do it. Yeah, my dad can delve more into that, but as a basis, it's more to do with the fact that everything he's saying is being controlled by the Hick family. He's not really saying, he's, he's, everything he's saying is being broadcasted through them and being voiced 
buy them, but just using Delhi as a platform. I feel like it's a way to kind of revive his career that he has and um, in a way look for some sympathy and um, an excuse, really. So, qu quickly, um, how, how did he go from, he was in Nigeria with his dad, right? Um, living a good life, going to a good school, right? He got what he wanted when he wanted, I presume. How did he go from there to um, being in foster care? I, I, I believe he was in foster care, right? My dad, yeah. my, my dad can explain that. All right. Otumba. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. Yeah, so it depends on what you want to know and where you want to start, to be honest. So the, the reason I'm, I'm going to the foster care part of it now is because clearly, like Storm just mentioned. Excuse me. There was no, never anything to do with any foster care. They okay. have never been in foster care. There's okay. no document in the UK or from any council in the UK that can confirm to you or anybody in this world that Dele Ali has been in foster care or adopted. Or adopted. Go and do your research. You, we have a lot of uh, investigative journalists. They can go check it out. All, all right. So, Otumba, what's, what's with the other family that has been, that their name have propped up a lot in this conversation? How did that come about? Um, I'll start by saying this. Kenny is a very, very close uh, relative of mine. We went to secondary school together in Maryland, in Nigeria. It was my junior in school. We lived in Milton Keynes together in the UK. You know, so his twin, I speak to his twin every day, he still lives in Milton Keynes. I was still lives in Milton Keynes. And they came to England, in, I think in the 90s, for education purpose. They were doing their masters and were living in Milton Keynes. Kenny met Dilly's mom in the nightclub, and Dilly was born. But Dilly's mom had two older sisters before then that she was looking after. And when Kenny finished his masters, he had to go back to Nigeria for whatever reasons I didn't know. Because he's not British, he came here to study, he came to England to study. So he decided to take Dilly with him because maybe he knew that the mom doesn't have the facilities to give his son the quality of life. The, the quality of life. And he gave the that in Nigeria. And he met his new wife, who is an American Nigerian lady in Nigeria, with Dele there. And him and the wife got married in Nigeria, and Dele was the best man. I will send you the pictures of his father and his new wife. And they both left with the, with the wife to live in America, in Houston, where he still lives today, up till now. Dele in Houston was not comfortable because he said he doesn't want to play basketball, he wants to play football. And the mom and the dad, the dad called the mom in England, this is what your son wants to do, I'm going to bring it back to England so he can start his football career. So his father brought him back to England maybe age 12, I think, and gave him back to his mom in England and we're all there, we all see it. Because I happen to work in football, I'm a football agent, so I know the good sides and the dark sides of the, of the game. And I know everything that was happening. And at that time, it was 12. There's no football. There's nothing. He went to school with um, Harry, the, 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 the schoolmates and friends, same way as your uh, friend, uh, Chris Carter, the white guy. So this is normal for kids to, to, to make, mix together. So then it goes to their house and all that stuff. Maybe they're more opponents in their house and for kids they want to be in a comfortable environment they want to play the games Billy's mom is not financially buoyant she lives in a council estate she has two other kids so the boy prefers and comfortable to stay with his friend which is normal for you it's normal for you when your mom passed Chris' mom used to come and pick you up and I've started warning you that don't let Billy happen to you is that what I've been telling you from, from me? yes you know so this is normal, where, where these kids grow up. Mixing with the other kids from white background is the normal thing. And we encourage that, because we live in a very, very liberal society now. But we didn't know this was going to turn into grooming a child. We only believe that you, know, you only get groomed for sex. We don't know you're going to get groomed to be taken advantage of financially as a kid. So when Daly was playing at MK Dons, Ari was playing in the same team. By the time that was, he wasn't living with them, he was going back home every day. And when Dele was 15, on a particular day, 
they did not drop the layer hole. And the mom called Kendi. Kendi was in Houston and said to Kendi, these people have not dropped my child. And Kendi called Alan Pickford. Kendi has their house number from Houston. And Alan said, oh, no, the kids are just they playing. Mean, no more thing, no no more thing. Thing. And Kendi was comfortable because yeah. these are people that he had their numbers. He called, called the house. He goes to the house. The mother sits in the garden and they drink tea together when the kids are playing football. So you wouldn't suspect that the people that welcomed you in the house welcomed your child. Are they going to do like this? So he said to Dennis' mom that, ah, come, why are you getting worried? The boy is only with his friends. I've spoken to them until it became a normal thing every Wednesday. They stay. They stay there every Wednesday because that is when they go training for football. And Dennis' mom doesn't have a car. And they volunteered to be dropping, him. dropping him off at home, not to be keeping him in yeah. the house. So when Dennis was turning to 16, MK Dons invited Dennis' dad from America to come to to, uh, to Milton King. And they said to him that your son is really doing well. And we think that you should sign a uh, letter of consent or what they call it, um, power, power uh, of attorney. Power of attorney to us so we can look after him properly. And Kenny told them categorically that I'm not going to sign any documentation for you. Oh, because I want my son to be successful playing football. What the most important thing to me is education for my son. So football is fine, but I still want my son to go to school. I just don't want him to do football. That was the error that Kenny apparently made because they just want the son for football. They don't want no education. But Kenny did not know the danger. That was coming. He went back to America. Then he continued playing his football. So the coaches now start scheming and planning with the family that brings Dele to training. How they were going to snatch him away from parents. They got an agent whose name is Rob Seagull. I'm quoting them so they can go and sue me if I'm lying. And Rob Seagull was the agent for Carl Robinson, who was the coach at MK Jones at that time. And they did the deal for Dele and me without his parents, without nobody, with the Ickford standing as his family. And since that day, Dele has been avoiding everybody. I took, I, I, we, we did that, we got Dele that came from America like seven years ago, when they planted it in the news that Dele's mom is an alcoholic so that they can blaspheme people and, and, and then do what they've been doing, the turn the world against that from the beginning. The woman became a, you know, a, a, a recluse. She can't come out of her house, she has to give up her job because everybody sees her as somebody that, you know, even woman that gave up her son. So the woman has been suffering for many years. Even Kenny, that's not married to her, is still the person that's helping her to be from America. You know, making sure that she's okay. We find we find out through investigative purposes where they lived. And myself and Kenny, five years ago, 2017. Six years, ago. Six years ago, drove in London like a detective and we located the property, which is a secured property. Then they know, then they can see this interview and see whether I'm right. And we, 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 we drove in there, they didn't open the security gate. We wait for a car to drive out of the place, then we drove in. We parked and we saw the window, we stood there and we saw Daily walking down from upstairs. And me and Dele, me and his father and Joshua, we walked to the door. And the first thing Dele did, because me, I didn't even think the dad was telling me the truth, you know that, that we just want to to it. The first thing Dele did was hug his dad. I was amazed. I told him when I came up, I was amazed. And his girlfriend was there, Ruby, Ruby May. She can testify to what I'm saying. She's a witness. And introduced the girl to his dad. And the dad, and he said to the girl to go upstairs and me and his dad we went downstairs to his room, to his house, went to trophy room downstairs, and his dad was saying, Daily, why are you doing this? He couldn't look us in the face. I even said to him, I told you, everybody knows, his dad will tell you. Um, Ari Ifford was not in the house that day. Daily was said, he gave his dad his new number, said, oh, dad, go, that, I said to him, stay in this house today. Daily said, oh, he's going to train, you know, and his dad is not there, you know. He said, no, don't worry, I'll see you tomorrow. You know that tomorrow, Gary Ickford has been told that Dennis Dad has come. We have not seen the baby. Two years later again, they moved him. They moved him and they keep moving him.
Again, his father came from America and traced him to another address in North London. Those what? people rented the property that they were paying 30,000 in rent in month. When this was happening, he was already playing for MK Dons, right? No, this was at Tottenham. He's already moved. They've already moved him from MK Dons. He was already playing in the Premier League? Yes. Interested. He was MK Dons. He, was already gone to, he has already gone to the World Cup. I was in his house with his dad, his real dad, Kenny. I tell Daily Ali I said that. I tell him to say I'm lying. And I'll show him all the videos in his house, in his trophy room with his dad. And he couldn't look his dad in his face. He's been dropped up. The boy is suffering. The whole world needs to help Daily Ali. And that's the truth. He's being groomed just because of his love for football. He's suffering. Great to speak the truth. So because they've groomed him. He, and he, he only wanted to play football and he didn't know he was going to make him lose his family. That's why he's not been playing well. He's psychologically messed up. All right. So, I, I mean, after... So, of course, when he moved to Spurs, he was having a good time. You know, I presume he was on a good he, contract. He, he was having a good... He, he was, when he moved to Spurs, when he was 18, his father, before he was... When this happened at MK Dons, that his father said he was not signing any document. So they went on to do whatever they did to sell him to Tottenham for seven or eight million at 18. So the day Dele told his dad that Tottenham want to buy him, Dele himself called his dad in Houston and said, this is that. And his dad called me and said, ah, my son called me and said, this is happening. I said, listen, you come down here because it's going to be his 18th birthday. That you come, when you come here, we'll see what's happening. When Kenny landed at uh, Etro, the same day, the Ickford family organized their 18th birthday party for Dele in Turkey and went on a private jet. That is what happened. So, so they were basically deliberately, you know, separating yes. him from his family. Go and check all my story and check whether they did not fly. And when Dele and his father is ready to come up, he will, because we want the authorities to tell Dele and the, and the club to go and seek independent, uh, uh, um, you know, uh, questioning. And, or Gary Neville, that we didn't bring any story out. He went to Gary Neville, not a voluntary interview, an interview sponsored by Sky Bet. So someone has been paid huge amount of money for this interview. Gary Neville got 5 million views. So Dele Ali is a mood. And now, we couldn't do anything for seven years because they gagged us. His father spent over two hundred thousand dollars. He's got all the documents. They gagged us in the UK because they they planted a false story in the newspapers, in the Sun newspapers, that Dele Ali's born is an alcoholic, so that they can send Dele Ali so, when he was eighteen. So Otumba, uh, let, let's just circle back a little bit. Um, so you said his mom became a recluse because obviously um, the stigmatization and you know all of the negative press that she had gotten. If, 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 if you grant me a minute, I can, call, I can call Tai Wali, who is getting there at this stream, and is in Milton Keynes now, and he will be with Dele at this point again now. That would be fantastic. Let me try. All right. Um, uh, fantastic one. Uh, looks like uh, uh, this is even going to be more bumper than uh, we thought. Uh, but we're, we're getting, you know, real-time information of how uh, Daily Ali's growth, you know. I'm as, calling them on video call. Yeah, fantastic. So I hope it uh, picks up. Uh, uh, how everything has happened. This, this is not a matter of football of money. This is a matter of welfare. This is... Hello? Hey, that Taiwo. I'm speaking, to, I'm speaking live to Wale Akbede, in, to Nigerian TV. This is Dele Ali's blood uncle. This is the twin of Kenny Ali, Dele Ali's dad. So I'm going to pass it to Taiwo. But I, I, you said, you told me a few minutes ago that you are going to Dele's home. Are you there? Yeah, no, I'm just going to test that. So. Okay, please. I want you to continue this interview with Mr. Agbede. Good, good evening, uh, Mr. Taiwo Ali. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. All right, fantastic. Um, great to know that you are with his mom. How's she doing, first of all? Is she well? Yeah, she's fine. So I'm just going to you know, see her in a few minutes. All right, um, fantastic. Um, so um, uh, Otumba was just telling us about, you know, all the negative press that she got um, when uh, a claim was made that, you know, she's an alcoholic. Um, a claim that Dele himself has gone on to um, confirm in that interview with Gary Neville last week 
Um, what do you have to say about this? Um, you, are, you are literally with her right now. Um, can you confirm to the world, to Nigerians and the whole world, that his mom is fine and not an alcoholic? Of course, uh, obviously, the mom is fine. She's, she, I, can, I can confirm that she's not an alcoholic. So I'm going to see her, like I said, uh, in a few minutes. So, yeah. Well, however, she's been disturbed by the news anyway. So I'm just going to see her and uh, you know, just uh, meet up with her in a few minutes. All right. Uh, be, be, before this interview with Gary Neville, before I, I'll let you go in a minute, uh, uh, Mr. Taiwo. Before this interview, right, there's been all the negative press surrounding... Um, the suggestion of alcoholism. How how has she taken it over the over the years, and and what has she done to to try to you know clear this up? Because I mean, she still has a long life to live ahead of her. Well, obviously, she's a poor woman. You know, she's just trying to you know live her life in her own simple way. You know, um, you know when you are being confronted with um, you know powerful people, you know. Um, over here, you know, things are different, you know, to the way it's done in Africa. Even though, you know, uh, the Africans don't believe certain things are happening. <laughs> so there are powers to be. You are contending with um, people with connections, people who have the, the media at their disposal. And so, to you up, they put the guy in down now through the courts for seven years. Yeah. So there isn't much that she can do anyway. So she's just trying to live her life in a simple way. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Tawali, for giving us a little bit of your time this evening. You're welcome. All right. Fantastic. Um, uh, Tawali, I'll, I'll call you after the interview. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That was quite revealing. O Otumba, so uh, Mr. Tawali describes uh, Dele's mom as a poor woman, you know, who's just trying to live her life as peacefully as possible. A simple woman. Are, are we... Is there a crime for anyone to be poor? Is uh, it because you are poor, they're going to steal your child? So, I... Uh, uh, being poor become a crime for somebody to steal someone's child? I, I want to believe or too bad that all the wealth that Dele must have amassed from being a Premier League player has not rubbed off on, on his mom at all. Even though she's literally in, in, in the United Kingdom with him. Listen... All what I'm coming here to say has got nothing to do with finance. Okay. It, it's got to do about a very young, a young boy that his family, not just his dad, his cousins, half brothers, all the people that shared his life from a very young age. His father, I've invested in my son as well. His father brought him to Nigeria, showed him our culture, done the right thing that you should do for a child like this, sent him into nice, good schools. You know, all the family embraced him, and this is what you get. It's saddening. This is not about money. This is sad. All right. Um, quickly, uh, as we round off uh, this evening, I really do appreciate your time. Um, what, 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 what is the plan of the family now? What, what do the, because, I mean... Look, the family, doesn't, they don't have any plan. The only plan is, Dele is the one and the people behind him that went to do an interview on Gary Neville that said all these allegations. We didn't say nothing. His father said. His father decided that listen, let this boy just continue his career. Let him just don't spoil my name, and we've left him alone. So okay, go. He's an adult, and he's an adult, and the man has gone with his life. Everybody, we are going with our lives. Nobody is begging daily for anything. We don't need nothing for it. Then you go. You go when your career is declining, and they're giving you drugs. They've messed up your head. I'm a football legend. I know all the problems you've had. You've been tested positive for drugs at Tottenham. Tested positive for drugs at everything. Tested positive for drugs at Mexicans. And all these bad people behind you are covering it up and destroying your life. And they're coming to use the family as scapegoat for all these problems. That is why we are out here. We are not out here for Dili or its money. We want Gary Neville to invite Dili as uh, is, is, is so supposedly very good family that helped him career. On that same seat, invite Kenny from Houston. On that same seat, Invite the ladies, political mom, on the same seat. Let them all face the world and, and speak. That's how they can help the ladies. All right, Storm, Storm, you, you wanted to chip in something. Yeah, I said, yeah, that's exactly what they should do. Everyone there should be there and speak together. Anyone that wants to lie should lie in front of the whole world. 
All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Otumba, it's been absolutely a pleasure to speak to you uh, this evening to air your side of everything that has happened. Uh, one, more, one more thing, Mr. Agbede. All right. Look, like I said, I'm an Otumba, I'm an, you know, I'm an elder and uh, work in football. African parents must be careful about strangers because there's someone who play football or they want to do music. They just give people their son, you know, because they want money. We can't continue to do this to our kids. It's unfair and a lot of pressure on them. It's bad. Please, all of us, we have to change our mentality. All right. Like the new president said, the most important thing for all Nigerians is our mentality. We all have to change our mentality for our country to change, for our children to understand. This mentality of us that we want, to, we think our family, our kids have to help us, it's crazy because that's what you see on the internet. Oh, because of his money, because of then that is that is a very very successful man, both in the U.S. and in Nigeria, on the same island that you you you, 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 you broadcasting. I have properties there. Then that is that has properties there. I'm not in England now. I have property where I am. I have property where my kids live in England. So this is not about daily and this money. This is about a child that has been groomed systematically by a white family. If a black family tries this in England, they will never see freedom in their life. Never. All never. Right. This is adoption, systematic adoption and grooming of a young boy for financial gain. Simple. It's not just sex that they take advantage of young people. Now they're taking advantage of us as, you know, our, 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 our profession, musicians, sports artists, you know, athletes, you know, even people with education, they're stealing our counselors, stealing our doctors, everything we have, they're taking from us. And we're just sitting down and we're just all mooning on the internet. Come on, man, I don't have time for that rubbish. All right. And I know you don't. Uh, of course I don't. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much, uh, Tumba Olowo and Storm Olowo uh, for joining us. Thank you very much. Uh, All you can do for us is make sure the whole world asks for the true story of Dede Adi. Let all the parents, left and right, come on the same guy in every show that he went to say this thing. What is the problem with that? That's the simple, simplest thing. Gary never collected money for the show. So they want to just hear one side of the story and they don't want to hear the other side. Yeah, come on, it doesn't work. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, of course, uh, we are interested in both sides. And that's why we have brought Otumba and Storm right here on the show. It's been absolutely um, uh, quite revealing uh, all the things that we've heard uh, this evening uh, from relatives of uh, former sports, former Everton. And of course, um, uh, last season was at Besiktas uh, midfielder Dele Ali, um, uh, who of course has played for the Three Lions of England, um, came from MK Dons, made that big move when he was 18. And now uh, all the stories surrounding his life with regards to drugs, uh, which he did admit to, although his timeline is quite different from the timeline that um, his family have set for, you know, when he has supposedly uh, been involved with drugs. Um, and, and, and everything is just really, really murky. Of course, Dele, of course, they talk about uh, uh, the, the, he made a claim about uh, sexual assault uh, of him when he was a minor, when he was about six years old. Um, and it's, it's just really, really, really messy. We do hope that um, uh, this clears up as soon as possible, especially for the player and for the family, uh, so that everybody moves on in peace. Uh, uh, but of course, uh, if the family says that they do want to clear this up uh, publicly, as daily as you know, taking the family's name public, then personally, I think they do have a right to. Um, and uh, we'll see how it pans out. We'll follow up with the story. And of course, if need be, we'll get Storm and Otumba Olu right back here. Uh, on your screens. It's been a bumper edition of Plus Sports on Plus TV.